And the other mistake that vegans do is they eat oil. Oil is junk food. How many calories? Look, oil is 120 calories per tablespoon, but because there's no fiber or significant micronutrient load, it doesn't shut down the apostat. If you were, wait, if you were waiting before the, up here cutting to come and eat at a buffet and I gave you a tablespoon of olive oil, you wouldn't take in less calories. There's no apostat reduction from the oil. Took a few nuts or a few are an apple, you'd cut back on the calories. The point I'm making right now is that oil makes you eat more calories. Most Americans are consuming over 400 calories of oil a day. How are you going to reduce your calories to a favorable way, range? How is it possible, you tell me, how it's possible to get your calories in a favorable range if you're pouring oil on your food? How is it possible to eat enough vegetation to eat your greens, your beans, your mushrooms, your onions, your berries, your seeds, your whole grains? How is it possible for you to eat all the things you're supposed to eat and not overeat calories if you're consuming oil? It's impossible. You're going to overeat calories. And if you're not overeating calories and you're putting oil on your food, then you're not eating enough phytochemicals and antioxidants. Because that should have been calories you should have been consuming with high nutrient plants. Do you follow me? This is empty calorie junk food. And then when you fry foods in oil, they become, they form free radicals, they oxidize, they become rancid, and they are carcinogenic. Right? You have the southern diet, the high, you know, with all these fried foods, it's the most dangerous diet in America, have the highest stroke rate in the world in these southern, country, in these southern parts of the United States. And I remember I said that one serving of French fries a week increases your risk of breast cancer by 26%. Even moderate consumption of fried foods is powerfully cancer-causing. These fats are really dangerous and they're even, you shouldn't even work in a fast food restaurant or in a movie theater where you're going to inhale the oils because even inhaling them can hurt your health. That's how dangerous they are. Now, when you eat, It's bad enough you cook foods in your own house. That's damaging enough. But if you eat a fast food oil cooked food, then you have the oil that's been heated up for hours and making like 40, 50 r rounds of french fries or fried chicken, you're eating that food. Have you ever had a piece of fried chicken from a, fr from a fast food restaurant or a piece of french fry from a fast food restaurant that's been fried over in that oil that's been heated over and over again? Raise your hand if you ever did that. Wow. <laughs> See, when you get your fats from nuts and seeds, they're completely biologically different from oil. Because they're not cooked, they're not rancid, right? They're they're in a package with phytochemicals and fibers and sterols and stanols that slow the absorption of the bloodstream. Remember I told you a half an hour ago that when you ate beans, all the calories aren't absorbed. Remember I told you that? Yeah. Well, when you eat nuts and seeds, all the calories aren't absorbed because the sterols and stanols that bind fat suck fat out into the toilet bowl. And the fat magnet in nuts and seeds is so powerful that they suck out oxidized LDL. They actually take free radicals out of the body. They actually take LDL cholesterol <laughs> and suck that fat out preferentially. So the body moves, moves, moves fat and moves sugar both from, through the villi in both directions. With the right foods and the right bacteria, you're actually removing things that should be removed and put in the toilet bowl and things that want to go in are out to come in. With the wrong foods, everything comes in, good stuff and the bad stuff. And, no, and nothing bad comes out. So Nuts and seeds also dramatically facilitate the absorption of the anti-cancer phytochemicals in the vegetables. So when you have that salad with the red pepper, the red onion, the scallion, the arugula, with a delicious dressing made with almonds and sunflower seeds and tomato paste and roasted garlic, what I'm saying to you right now, and a little fig vinegar or balsamic vinegar in there, make a delicious tomato paste for the salad. I'm saying to you, the fact that you put some nuts and seeds on your salad made you better able to absorb the anti-cancer phytochemicals in the salad. So when should you eat your nuts and seeds? When should you eat most of your fat in your diet? Should you eat most of it when you eat your mango and your oatmeal in the morning? No, you should eat your nuts and seeds at your meal that contains the biggest amount of vegetables. We have more of the anti-cancer phytochemicals present. Should you snack on nuts and seeds? You wasted them. 
You only eat them with the meal that has the most green vegetables, with the most vegetables to facilitate the absorption of the phytochemicals that are, that, that are fat-soluble nutrients. Yikes, I'm running out of time here. I'm talking too slow. Okay, so here's the thing, is that there's no controversy here. Zero controversy. You don't have to ask me this question. When you don't eat nuts and seeds, you increase your risk of sudden cardiac death. And if you have heart disease and you're not eating nuts and seeds, you're increasing your risk of death. You got that? You don't take nuts and seeds out of a diet because you have heart disease. That's harmful to your health and been proven to be harmful. 40% decreased cardiovascular mortality from meta-analysis of more than 350,000 people, more than 44,000 deaths followed for decades showing that the inclusion of nuts and seeds reduces risk of death from both heart disease and cancer and their exclusion increases risk of death. Here's the Prevamid study comparing olive oil to nuts and seeds showing that when people ate more olive oil and less butter they had heart attack rates went down by 10 percent. That doesn't prove olive oil is a health food just because it's better than butter or better than sugar because when they use nuts and seeds instead of olive oil then heart attacks went down by 70 percent not 10 percent. You can show anything by comparing it to something that's worse and these G-bombs there's significant there's more than a hundred studies on every particular G-bomb showing its link to lower rates of cancer and they have anti-fat storage effects and anti-glycemic effects which reduce the glycemic effect of everything you eat and there's the beans and the lentils and the split peas and the peas with the high levels of resistant starch and the high amounts of fiber these are some of the healthiest foods in your world I'm showing you this again to reinforce that most of your carbohydrate intake should come from carbohydrates that are low glycemic not from carbohydrates that are high glycemic and the lowest glycemic carbohydrate source are beans they're a superfood and they're linked to enhanced longevity and longer lifespan in any population in every population they've been studied these are irrefutable facts that vegetables beans seeds nuts fruits are good for you that excessive amounts of animal products cause disease and that refined carbohydrates cause disease and lead to overweight and obesity and let's stop arguing about which is worse because animal products are not worse than refined carbohydrates they're both equally bad and it may even be true that refined carbohydrates are worse so if you're having that pizza last night you might as well just come up and have a piece of steak it's no improvement if you're on a high glycemic vegan diet you're not going to achieve good health and a longer life it's been well established you have to cut out the refined carbohydrates the sugar and the junk food and the animal products or at least reduce them dramatically mm -hmm.